Hello, Tanya Laird here for part 3 of Lecture 12 of ENGR 231 Engineering Statics. This final portion of the lecture is going to be fairly brief. I'm just going to go through uh, some, of the, uh, some of the aspects of applying what we've looked at in terms of frame equilibrium and member internal forces to solve for internal forces in frames. So this is going to be internal forces in frames. Let us consider internal forces in frames. So we've learned two things so far. Well, we've learned quite a bit in this class, but uh, two of the big things we've learned so far is how to find for member, how to solve for member end forces in frames. That was what we looked at uh, primarily. That's the primary topic we looked at in lecture 11 with all its uh, portions and parts. So lecture 11, we looked at internal force, or actually member end forces in frames. Uh, member end forces in frames. And then in lecture 12, parts 1 and 2, we looked at member internal forces or internal forces in a single member. And we looked at several permutations of that, whether you're dealing with horizontal vertical, uh, horizontal members, slanted members, or in the case, or or uh, whether you had uh, point loads or distributed loads applied to those members in a single member. Now, how do you handle that? Uh, so, how do we handle it though if we have a frame that has loads applied to it, and we're looking for the internal force at some point on that frame? So, for example, let's say you had something like this. Let's say you have a frame. Let's consider something relatively simple here. Let's say there is a pin here, and maybe a pin, maybe a straight member here, and another pin here, and a horizontal element here. And another pin here, and this should be statically determinant based on the equations we've looked at previously. And so you have a horizontal member and a vertical, and then a slanted member. And how do you find the uh, for the internal forces at some point? So let's say I'm interested in forces at oh maybe a point A here. Let's say this is point A, and you want to find the internal forces at point A. At point A. And let's say we have points C, D, and E here. Okay. So how would you do that? And let's say there were a couple, let's say there were a few forces applied to this, maybe, oh, a horizontal load here and a vertical load here. So I'm just discussing this in gen in the general case. I don't know if I want, I don't think I want to work through a, add a complete example, but I just want to discuss a general case and you can uh, use the knowledge from the previous two, uh, por from the previous two portions of this lecture and from lecture 11 to put all this together. So um, the general steps, let's just discuss this generally. One, we have to solve for the external member forces, or member end, for end forces, what I should say. Find member end forces. And this is basically all the stuff we looked at on lecture 11. This is the lecture 11 material. So you're going to separate the frame into its constituent parts, like so. And you could start with a global free body diagram if you wanted. Um, there are any number of ways you could do this. So you'd have this, you could have something like this. Oh, I just noticed there's no point B, but oh, well, that's okay. So you'd have this uh, here, and here we would have basically six unknown forces and uh, two items, two objects. That would be um, six equations of equilibrium. So that will be uh, you know two rigid or two rigid bodies with three equations of equilibrium each. So this would be statically determinant. So we would have a cx, a cy, and then maybe a dx and a dy. and dx and dy, 
and another dy and a dx and a dx and then maybe an ex and an ey here ex and ey dx and dy so basically you would apply you know and you'd also need to include the forces here i suppose that force and that force and you would apply equilibrium to either the entire thing as a single global rigid body or you would apply equilibrium to this one balance of forces balance of moments you have two you have again two objects each with three equations of equilibrium you have a total of three unknowns on each object well actually a total of six unknowns you have enough equations of equilibrium to solve all of these using all the things we've learned in statics so far and so you get all those that's relatively simple and then two once you have those the rest really isn't too bad the member end forces really are the key to solving for the internal forces in a frame. Once you have the internal forces, or once you have the member external forces, or the member end forces, I should say. Analyze each piece on its own, or each member, as you learned in lectures 11, uh, lecture 12, part 1 and 2 in parts one and two of this lecture. Of this lecture. So again, you'll take a, well, you already have the member end forces, so you don't even have to do the first step, which is usually to apply global equilibrium to uh, a member to find its external reactions. So we basically already have the external reactions for that member. It's the member end forces. And so since you're interested in the force at point A, I would basically cut this member here. And if I cut that there, if that was the only point I was interested in, and I would have to know the dimensions of this, of course, I would have some value for ODX here. And I think I assumed that would be down into the end to the left. But again, it could end up either way, just depending on... I would just generally redraw this in whatever direction they actually happen to be when I redraw my free body diagram. And since this was um, point A here, I would have an NA, the axial force at A, the shear at A, an a, a VA, so we know this one of these has to be wrong, and then some sort of MA, the moment there. And really, that's it. So you just go and... Um, First, you apply all the things you've learned in terms of uh, frame equilibrium. You break the object apart into its component pieces using an exploded free body diagram. You solve for all of the mem member end forces, the, mem the forces at a support, at any internal pins or joints or anything like that. And then once you have that, you can look at one individual member, make a cut on it, do the method of sections, and solve for the internal member forces. And while uh, actually working through a full example of that can take some time, uh, there are examples of that in your book. And really, I don't think it's too long, too much more difficult than we've looked at previously. So we've already looked at plenty of examples of solving for internal forces in frames, or sorry, remember, end forces in frames, I should say. And we've looked at three examples of finding um, uh, internal forces, shear, axial force, and moment uh, in parts one and two of this lecture. So that is the basic process for handling internal forces in simply statically determinate frames. Um, now, if you have more complex uh, frames that are not statically determined, things, of course, get more complex. But this is static, so we do work primarily with statically determined systems. Okay. All right, I think that'll do it for, the, for this portion of the lecture. All I wanted to do is briefly describe. And again, the, the thing about this is um, once you're good with finding all the... When, if you're good with Lecture 11, all, finding all of the member internal forces, if you're good with uh, Parts 1 and 2 of Lecture 12, where we learn to find member internal forces at a, at a cut, uh, using the method of sections. If you're good with both of these, all you have to do to find the internal forces in frames is put those two things together. You just first find the member end forces using what we've looked at in lecture 11, and then we then you do a cut and find the uh, internal force at whatever point you're interested in using what we saw in parts one and two of this lecture. All right, that'll do it for now. Um, please let me know if you have any questions on this. Uh, this will be the last portion of lecture 12, but I will see you very soon for lecture 13. Again, please let me know if you have any questions. I hope you found this enjoyable, uh, maybe not entertaining, but at least uh, enjoyable and maybe a little bit illuminating or uh, elucidating. That's probably not the right word. Um, a little bit... Uh, I hope you've got good knowledge out of this. There we go. There's some very basic English. Okay, again, please let me know if you have any questions. If not, I'll see you soon for part, thir uh, part uh, not, actually not for part, another part. I will see you soon for lecture 13, where we'll start looking at shear and bending moment diagrams. Please let me know if you have any questions. And as always, thank you.